Hi, my name's Ravan and this is my channel, The Yorkshire Sale Girl. I thought I'd pop on today. It is Friday afternoon. It is miserable outside and I mean miserable. So I thought I'd just come on and have a catch up with you guys because I know I've been saying for quite some time I'm going to talk about the makes that I've um, done. Now I've spoken about makes in regards to anything that I've done a collab on but I haven't actually talked about any of my makes that I've made going all the way back to July. I know, that's really bad of me. So I was very well aware that I needed to kind of do a bit of catching up. So I thought I'll have a little catch up vlog with you guys. I'll talk about a few makes that I've made a couple of months ago um, and just talk you through all of that. And then maybe in the next catch up vlog, I'll do the same thing and do a few makes as well. I've just been for my nails done. They're very goth, black with glitter look. <laughs> I went for autumnal colours and I was going to go for loads of different shades and I came in with black glitter. I don't know what happened, but that happens every time I go to see my lovely nail lady. <laughs> so how are we all doing? How are we all doing? I'm doing blooming wonderful. Um, yeah, it's been really busy at work. I have been sewing quite a bit though in an evening, which has been nice. I've had a lovely Zoom call with my girls Tamlin from Sailor on the Tide and Rachel from Stitched Up. So we had a good chat um, this week and that is because we wanted to have a catch up as well because I think I've mentioned it on here before but we are off to the Knitting and Stitching show together down in London. So I've done the Knitting and Stitching show in Harrogate every year for the last few years and I always go with my mum and we've booked it again for this year. Um, but me and the girls were kind of saying, oh, you know, we'd really like to go to the Knit and Stitching show in London. I, I've never been. So we were like, why don't we just go? We've been talking about it for quite some time and kind of had it firmed up and everything. Um, so we're staying outside of London. We've got a little apartment, the three of us, um, which is brilliant because it's kept the costs right down. And we're going to travel into London on the Saturday. And we've got tickets for the show. So I can't wait. The only thing is... <laughs> that is the day that we've just found out there's a train strike so the knit and stitch and show have put a, a thing up to basically say if you've got a ticket for the saturday you can use it on any of the other three days as well but because we've already booked our accommodation and nothing can be changed we're gonna have to go on the saturday so by hook or by crook we will be there we've said we're just gonna get down there and just see what happens um you know some of the local trains hopefully will be running and if not we'll have to get a bus or we'll have to uber it or whatever but we're gonna be there so i'm really looking forward to that i literally cannot wait so um yes on the saturday while we're down there which is next saturday which is it's seventh or the eighth i can't even remember now anyway whichever date it is myself Tamlin and Rachel we're gonna do a YouTube live <gasps> so it's gonna be over on Rachel's um from Stitched Up's channel she's gonna set it all up for us because she's used to doing lives and I'm like oh my god what do I need to do I've no idea and she's like don't worry I've got this so she's gonna do the live so that's gonna be on Saturday next week at 8 p.m so we're gonna have been to the show during the day get back have time to hopefully grab something to eat and chuck us comfies on and then we're going to sit down with a bottle of Prosecco probably and have a chat to you guys so we would love it if you could come and join us now Rachel's going to try and set the live up if possible I will put a link below if not head over to Rachel's channel because I'll put her channel along the bottom anyway in the description box and you can go and see and as soon as she schedules the live you'll be able to click on that so I really hope that you guys can join us because We've got special stuff to talk to you about <laughs> um, and we want your opinions on stuff. So we want you to be very much involved um, in our decision making processes. So I would love it if you would join us next Saturday at 8 p.m. I won't say any more anyway, because I don't really know myself, but <laughs> you know what I'm like. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Oh, I, I am wearing me made today, as in not me made, I sh suppose I should say handmade because I haven't made this but I made a dress for mum recently for her holidays so yesterday when she came around she handed me a little gift bag and inside it 
was this knitted vest that she'd been knitting me for ages. Now, sewing up a dress is a little bit quicker <laughs> than knitting something for somebody. And I think she was kind of knitting it, hoping she could give me it for Christmas. But then she said she felt guilty because I'd given her a dress and she was like, I'm gonna have to give you this now. And I was like, yes, <laughs> look at this bad boy. Look at that, isn't it beautiful? So it goes from a pink to like a pale pink to almost like a greeny beige. It's coming out a slightly different colour on here to a grey. And I've just been wearing it today over a plain white, ready to wear shirt in my jeans. And I love it. How clever is she? I can't knit at all. I can knit, but I'm a little bit impatient. Um, so I prefer to sew. But I'm really lucky, aren't I? And when I went to have my nails done, the first lady that was in the seat before me went, oh, is that, is that, is that a handmade knitted garment? I said, it is. Absolutely. My mother's just given me it. She was like, that is very nice. So I told my mum, I think she was chuffed. <laughs> anyway, what have I been up to? Yeah, sewing, chatting to the girls. Um, I popped into, we've, I think I've mentioned it on my channel before, we've got um, a little shop in Osset called the Recycle Yard um, and it's run by one of my kids ex teaching assistants and she's fantastic and basically you can go down there and you can donate lots of stuff and she has everything she has loads of crafty things she has some fabric all crafts arts and crafts beads knitting stuff foam and people go down there and they pay ridiculously cheap prices for it, and it all gets recycled and everybody's happy and it's great she's just moved over the yard to a slightly bigger place as well so it's been brilliant so I popped in there because I wanted to support her the other day and guess what I found Kaching patterns now I knew she did have some patterns because I've donated some to her before when I've had a clear out and I thought I'll just have a quick look in case somebody else has donated some and they had so I picked up the penny dress by sew over it now i really like this dress i think it's probably more of a summer dress but i was thinking to pick this up and maybe make it for the summer months um although i bet you could probably extend these sleeves a little bit and then just pop it on with a cardigan so who knows two pounds two pounds um the sarah shirt now this is a by hand london shirt and that's it on the back look with shorter sleeves but it's got a really lovely, like, um, scooped collar. But I love the line drawings as well on these. So that's your short sleeve. And then here's your long sleeve look with like a bishop sleeve. And it's got little tucks here. Well, I think that looks beautiful. I think that'd be gorgeous in a viscose. And it'd be really nice for work. So I picked that up. Two pounds. And then I already have this pattern. The spring dress. Now... I saw this, I know it's really hard to come by, so I picked it up. And the reason I picked this up is because I have made this previously and the arm um, cuffs are drafted incorrectly on here. So they are wrong. Um, and as a result of that, they're incredibly tight on my arms and it's just not comfortable. But I love the style of the dress. The dress fits me really well. So I really want to make it again. But... I've messed about with my pattern that much that when I saw this for two quid, I thought, you know what, I'm going to get it anyway, just in case. And I've got it sat waiting if I need to mess about with it anymore, because I really do, really do like this. And what I might do is I might lengthen both the tiers so it comes kind of midi because I like that look. Um, but yeah, I, I need to go back and have a look at my notes to see what I would need to do about the sleeves. But... Very happy with that. So again, two pounds. So I've got three lovely patterns for two pound each. So they're going into my stash. I'm trying only to pick up patterns now that I believe I will definitely make. Um, I think it's easy to get into that trap, particularly if you've got magazine subscriptions and you get given, you know, three or four patterns sometimes every single month. So I do go and I have a look at the sewing magazines in um, the supermarkets. Um, and I always have a look at the patterns, but I'll only buy the magazine if I think there's a pattern on there that I would definitely make. I don't want to add to my stash more and more and more. You know what I'm saying? What else have I done? Oh, and I framed a couple of things. I framed my sewing diva that I got from 
York when I went with the girls and with Lorianne to York. So that's framed now, ready to go up tomorrow. My husband's going to put that up for me. I don't think he knows that yet. <laughs> and I've also framed the card that Tamlin and Rachel got me for my birthday. How gorgeous is that? Pink and red as well. So it's got like the singer sewing machine on and it says you are so awesome so i framed that as well so he's gonna put that up for me tomorrow again does not know <laughs> but um the reason i've got those out ready is because he's gonna be putting our pictures up in our living room because we've reframed them all now it is the last step in the living room and we're done so when they go up tomorrow i could sit back and be i would love a rug and a big poofy table type thing in there but that's gonna have to wait because we're skimmed <laughs> forget it right now Ruan but I thought I would show you ta-da I made my cushions guys I did it I finally did it so when I went to sew tune Tamlin sew tune I bought four feather filled cushions and they are so luxurious you know what I'm saying um and I used the fabric that I'd bought from Fabworks in Dewsbury and I've made Four. I've got two to just show you, but I made four all together. Just they're just envelope cushions, so that's the back of them. Sorry, they've been squidged and sat on and punched by my kids several times. So they're just plain blue velvet on the back in an envelope. Look, hello, Whoop -whoop. and then on the front is the beautiful, luxurious velvet. Um, so that's one of them. I brought another one up to show you, and then that's another one. I brought the nicer looking ones up to show you. Reason be, reason I say that is because um, two of them have got like a stalk in them. But because I only had a certain amount of fabric, I only had a metre of this fabric and I needed four cushions. I didn't have the luxury of being able to place the four cushions exactly where I wanted them to be from the pattern perspective. So one of them's got a stalk with no head. <laughs> But I don't think anybody else would notice it was even a stalk. It's just me because I know the pattern. But how luxurious are these? The only thing the only thing I might do is I might take them out and just sew them up a little bit smaller just to make them poof out even more. But I do like putting them on my sofa and then cry chopping them. You know, so they sit like that. So, yeah, so I've done it, guys. I've finally done it. So four cushions all made. Funnily enough, my husband went to bed, they're cracking, they are. I said, oh, thanks. He said, they must be really hard to make. <laughs> I just looked at him and I went, Steve, it's one of the easiest things you could possibly sew. And he went, is it? And I went, Steve, I have sewn a coat, a lined coat. And you're telling me that these are the most wonderful thing that I've ever sewn. Really? So we had to eat his words. I'm just had a little slurp of my coat. I don't normally have a coat, but we got it free with the Chinese. <laughs> makes me feel naughty anyway so i've done that yes so i thought i picked out three makes that i've made i think it was in july and august um oh, in fact no i'm just looking down at my notes i made my zadie in june that's how long ago it was i'm rubbish at these videos let's talk about the zadie first actually let me let me grab these down here I'll chuck, them, I'll chuck them on here. You can't see what this is here. It's an ironing board with a massive pile of stuff on it. <laughs> but don't forget, I will be putting pictures up as well. So this is my Zadie. It's not tied up yet. But here she is. All Bet Lynch leopard print. <laughs> oh my goodness. Right, okay. We need to discuss this pattern. Have you made this pattern or have you not paid this, made this pattern? If you have made this pattern, do you understand the hype? Because I was kind of like, yeah, it's all right, looks nice, and, you know, it's okay. And then I've seen more and more versions and more and more versions and everybody's like, why did I wait so long to make this AD? And I'm like, really? Is it that amazing? And then I made it and I'm like, yes, it actually is. <laughs> it is that amazing. So I made it with some fabric that I bought from Rainbow Fabrics, um, Kilburn. Now I already had some of this fabric. I made a, is it a Bakerloo blouse by Nina Lee in it and I loved it that much that when I saw it back in stock I ordered more of it because it is really delicious. It's um, not a really lightweight viscose, it's got a really good weight to it and what I love about it is it goes from like a, a darker to lighter leopard print as well. 
So yeah, I made big use of that. And then I put a couple of labels in that just say fabulous and make as well, because I think that pink just pops right out, doesn't it, in that animal print. So let's let's talk all things Ada. Now, I've been watching as well recently Tamlin and the lovely Helen from Stitch Root Repeat because they did a collab about the Zadie. So I will try and remember to pop their details in below as well in case you are thinking about the Zadie because they've got loads of hints and tips on sizing as well. But I will talk through what I did. And what I'll do is I'll pop some photos up now of me in it so that you can see. And I will also be putting along the bottom here the size range of this pattern as well just so that you can see what it goes up to from and up to um but yeah guys 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 i'll be making more of these that's all i'm gonna say i absolutely love it i i think it might be my favorite thing i've ever made that's a bold statement i appreciate that but i think it's actually my favorite garment i mean i could overwear that do you know what i mean every time I go somewhere I could wear that because it's so comfortable it's ridiculous it's so comfy it looks dressy you can put it on with trainers if you want you can wear it with a pair of heels if you want it's just it's bob on you know what I'm saying so let's talk sizing first now I've seen a lot of people that have said that this is oversized I did a lot of research on this Sadie pattern because I am not a massive fan of oversize. I like some things to be oversized, i.e. loungewear, t-shirts, things like that. Totally comfortable with that. Um, but I don't want something that's either a dress really or a jumpsuit, for example, to be oversized. So I needed to think really carefully about the sizing. So if I talk to you about what size I should have been, and then I'll tell you what I actually did. So I should have been a 16 on the bust, a 20 on the waist, so that's quite, that's two sizes up for the waist, and then a 16, 18 for the hips, so it's kind of 16, 18, 20, 16, <laughs> so it's a fan of a triangle or a diamond. Anyway, I was really bold and I went down one size on my bust, so I did a size 14 on my bust, I went down two sizes on my waist, so I went down from a size 20 to a size 16, and then on my hips, I went down two sizes again. So I should have been a 16, 18, but I cut a 14. So I actually cut 14, 16, 14. And I am so happy with the fit. I'm like really happy. And I did that based on the finished garment measurements and also lots of research that I've done from other people. I had absolutely no issue with the crotch depth as well. I know a lot of people said that they had to either bring it up or, or take it down because there's a lot of um, ease there. Now, it is meant to be a baggy pattern. That's, that is it's supposed to be kind of oversized and relaxed. Um, so I was a bit scared going down a couple of sizes, I must admit. But yeah, absolute perfection for me. There is no gaping whatsoever on the crossover. Yeah, it's just, it's a blinder, you know what I'm saying? So let me have a look at my notes. Um, I put really lovely so. I'm glad I sized down. <laughs> Don't you think it's funny when you read your own notes back? Wrap top fits nicely without gaping. Um, I did put on here though that I might increase the length of the ties slightly next time. I don't know whether it's because I sized down a couple of sizes on my waist. The tie's fine and it, it's not a problem, but I wouldn't mind just a little bit of extra length in it. Um, I lengthened the legs. That's the only thing I did. And I lengthened them by two inches. And that is because that was the only fabric that I had. So I managed to get it all out of three metres, I think. And I lengthened them as much as I possibly can. Now, I'm still unsure about the length of the legs. I don't know in my mind whether they needed to be a little bit longer or if I need to chop a couple of inches off to make them cropped. They're in that no man's land area. You know what I'm saying? So I'm still I'm still debating that, but I've worn them a couple of times. And do you know what? I reckon I could wear these with kind of Dot Martin type boots as well in the winter and a big chunky cardigan. I think it'd look absolutely gorgeous. So, yeah, I'm, I'm literally in love. Um, there was only a couple of things in the instructions. The instructions were pretty good, but there were a couple, I think, that... So throughout the instructions, if I remember rightly, because obviously it's been a few months, 
it would tell you everything to do, which, you know, real holding your hand type of instructions, which is really nice. But then there was a couple of times where that was missing. So, for example, when you're doing your waist ties, I, I prefer to um, close one of the ends up when you're sewing it so that it's all nice and, nice and neat and tidy when you turn it out. But I think what they wanted you to do was not close the ends up turn it out and then sew it up afterwards and I'm kind of like we don't need to do that um so I just I like that just from a perfectionist point of view um and and things like um hemming for example it just says turn over one inch and sew not overlock the edges or double turn it or anything like that so it's just from a beginner's point of view really and I, I thought it was a little bit strange considering the instructions were fantastic all the way through and really held your hand and then there was just the odd thing that was missing but would I recommend this pattern yes I would it's awesome and I cannot wait to make another one already so that's going to be in the pipeline soon I think it would be really really nice to do a plain fabric one um for Christmas you know what I mean um I know a lot of people make this out of like linen viscose as well or a proper linen or cotton lawn or whatever like a stiffer fabric but I watched something that draped because you know what I'm like I, like I like something that drapes but I wouldn't mind trying that in a viscose linen I think that would actually be really nice what do we think I uh, love it so that's make number one and you know what I've always said to you haven't I jumpsuits just do not suit me well I think this one does and maybe I just needed to make my own and that's you know all I needed to do so moving on to jumpsuit number two <gasps> jumpsuit number two how many leopard print jumpsuits do I need in my life the answer is lots <laughs> so when I met up with the gorgeous Tamlin and Rachel in Leeds we all decided we were going to make a jumpsuit um and I decided, I just bought, I think, the Jennifer Lauren Farris jumpsuit. Now, I really like this pattern and it's quite different to um, the other one. In fact, all three all three things I'm going to talk to you about, my fabrics from Fabric, um, Rainbow Fabrics from Kilman. Anyway, um, I bought this fabric a while ago now. This is one that I'd seen on there ages, for ages and I hadn't bought it. I was being very good and then suddenly it sold out and I was gutted. <laughs> So then when I did see that it was on, I snapped it up straight away and I got three metres of the stuff. It's a viscose crepe and if I show you the back, I might show you a bit more. It's just all kind of patches of animal print and polka dots, my absolute favourite things all compiled. And it's a black, grey and white kind of colourway all together. How nice is that? So you can't really see it as well on here, but I will um, insert some pictures again anyway so that you can see. But this is it so far. Um, yeah, I'll pop some pictures in again here and I'll talk again about... Way up, just trying to fall over. I'll tell you what, let me put it back up here with the ZD. And then it won't fall off. Yeah, I'll pop um, all of the size measurements and all that sort of stuff as well along the bottom here and pop some pictures in so you can see. Now, I haven't written an awful lot about this jumpsuit and that's because it was great. It was a really, really good so i enjoyed making it i had absolutely no issue with it whatsoever it was spot on now i've put here that i managed to cut it out of three meters just and i didn't lengthen the legs because of the fabric restrictions a bit similar to um the zady um but anyway measurements wise let's talk through what i would have been because i know a lot of people are interested in that um i should have been a c on the bust because if i remember rightly Apologies if this is incorrect. Um, you have to do your high bust measurement and your um, full bust measurement. And I think it was coming out that I was a C cup. But I know you're all going to tell me off. I've always been a B cup in every pattern that I've done as well. So I just went with a B cup. <laughs> so my body measurements said a C cup. But the finished garment measurements, I went with a B cup. I know I'm naughty. My waist should have been an 18 slash 20 and I made an 18 because the ease and obviously it's going to be drawn in in the middle with a drawstring and on the hips I should have been a 16, 18 so I just cut the straight 18 because I thought well if I'm making an 18 on the waist I'll just go straight down because it's a lovely wide legged jumpsuit this one 
um, which I really like. It's kind of a different type of style. And it's got lovely buttons down the front. It has got facings as well around. I'll show you my buttons actually. Um, oh, I put the same, how weird is that? I put the same labeling as well. One that says fabulous, because that's how I feel in it. I got these buttons here, if you can see. They're a little bit fancy. I got these from Fabworks and every now and again at the till they've got loads of cards of buttons and I think these were something ridiculous like 20p for a card or something like that but they're gorgeous aren't they so I used those I did think about a um a contrast button because <laughs> you know what I'm like but I decided to go subtle this time and then you have the drawstring in the middle here now it's great because look you just draw it right in in the middle I don't know if I've mentioned this before on this channel, but for drawstrings, I tend to use shoelaces a lot. Um, and the reason for that is because the, the ends are finished. You know what I'm saying? Um, I have on a couple of them that I've used drawstring from, just tied them, but they always kind of fray a little bit, don't they? And I know you can get certain things that you'd have to buy to put on the end to neaten them up, but I just went on to, I think it was eBay or Amazon, and I bought a re for a really cheap price ages ago a massive pack of like 40 pairs of shoelaces in all colours of the rainbow. And all I do is I chop the ends off one side of each and I sew them up in the middle. And then I feed it through as if it is a proper drawstring. So then you've got the finished ends and these are really nice and soft. Um, and I just use that as my drawstrings. So yeah. It's a little handy tip there and it's cheaper as well a lot of the time because if you buy a massive pack like I did if I if I can find I probably won't I'm laughing at myself now um if I can find something similar I'll try and pop it in the description box below so that you can see the kind of thing that I'm talking about but you can chop the length off before you attach it to make it exactly the size that you want it to be etc and it's large cheaper so yeah what have I written then so really nice so great instructions that's it I mean, you can't ask for more. Would I make the pattern again? Yes, I absolutely would. I think it's a really, really nice pattern. It's really easy to make and I feel great in it. And again, I was uncertain whether I was going to like it because it was a jumpsuit and I think it looks all right on me. So I'm re happy. Talking about reet, let's talk about the reet address. Let me get to my notes. This was made in July, by the way. Let's show you my reet. Here she is. Dun, dun, dun. Again, fabric from Rainbow Fabrics, but this one was gifted. The other two were purchased. This was actually gifted to me as one of their launches, their um, fabric drops. And it's a beautiful viscose. Um, really, really nice to work with in this like sage green with white splodges. So they're not, it's like polka dots, but it's not um, regular polka dots, it's irregular polka dots. But this is just, the fabric is just beautiful. I absolutely love this. It's gorgeous. So let's talk all things Rita dress and then I'll pick this back up to show you a couple of features in a moment. Now, shall we talk measurements first? Shall I, I'll pop some pictures in again now and I'll put a get along the bottom like I normally do, what the sizes are from and to. This is the first pattern I think I've ever made by Named Clothing. Um, and they said it was for an advanced sewist. And I agree with that because there are quite a bits with it, quite a few bits within this pattern that require to have some experience, I think. Um, it's not the quickest and easiest of patterns. And I have to say that it had me scratching my head a few times, in all honesty. I'm incredibly happy with how it turned out altogether, but it did have my head scratching a bit. Anyway, let's talk uh, measurements before we go on. So my body measurements should have been a 46 bust, 48 waist and a 48 hips. But I went with a 46 all the way down. So I kept with the same on the bust, but I sized down one on the waist and the hips. And because it was being drawn in and there's tons of ease in the skirt, I thought we'll be fine. And I'm more than happy with that um, choice. In fact, I probably could have even gone down one more size in all honesty. So I might even try that next time, but it is supposed to be like a loose fitted dress that you can then pull in with the drawstring. So 
Now, yes, this isn't a this isn't a quick and easy make by any stretch of the imagination. It is um, not complicated make as such, but there's lots of elements to it. But I did really enjoy sewing it up as well. So you have these really unusual pockets. It's a bit baggy because it's um, made out of viscose. It needs a bit of a press. But so can you see they have like a little pleat inside them? which is really unusual. I've never made one of these before, but I really like the look of that. It's just something a little bit different. And then obviously you top stitch around it. Now I was brave and I was doing my top stitching in the same color as the polka dots. So it was like, this has to be right. Um, but I did enjoy pulling, putting them together. Obviously it's sagging a bit now, but when you've got, when you've got your boobies in it, it doesn't sag as much because <laughs> your, your boobies are pushing them out a bit. But I like that feature. Again, it's got a drawstring in the middle. Now I didn't use shoelaces for this. I just used some old, um, drawstring that I had but can you see what I mean about the ends I don't like them when they go like that so I might end up changing that anyway it's obviously got um, a very neatly finished <laughs> look at me blow my own trumpet um, collar it has a yoke it has turned back cuffs on the sleeves it has buttons pretty much all the way down the front Inside is a facing all the way down. And then on the sides, it's got, where is it? Where, where are my splits there? It's got cheeky splits, can you see? So they're done where you just sew across at the top and then they split down. What do we think? I love it. And I love this color on me actually. I've got a lot of compliments on the color with my complexion so yeah it's great and then look inside <gasps> look at that now this i've never done this way before constructing the drawstring what they do is they have you use ribbon and then you mark it out all along the pieces and then you just sew it on so that the top stitching shows on the outside and then you pull your drawstring through it now i really like that touch so it just if you can see it here look underneath the facing you just fold it over like that but I love the flash of that stripe in there and I think I would definitely use that again that was just some scrap ribbon that I had in my stash so that's another good way of kind of using up some of that stuff and then I use these gorgeous little buttons that I got from my local shop in Osset see if you can see those I don't know if it will show but they're basically kind of shiny and they've got like a little floral print on them. But they thought I thought they went really well with the dress as well. Very pleased with that. So, yes, I loved using the ribbon for the corded waist. I thought that was really good. I love the cuffs on the sleeves. I love the split in the sides. It's like a relaxed dress, but that looks smart, but it's also got a bit of sex appeal to it. Do you know what I'm saying? Probably not. Anyway, um, I did get it out of three metres. I think it said you needed a lot more. And I was chatting again with Alyssa from By Alyssa on Instagram because she's my go-to. Um, she's made nearly every dress in the whole wide world and she's awesome. So I messaged her a lot on if I'm going to make something that she's made and I kind of get loads of hints and tips off her and, uh, you know, learn from her mistakes, which is good. And she was like, yeah, you'll get it out of three metres. Don't worry about it. So I did just. The only thing was on my facing, because the facing goes up on all the way round, well up here um a bit similar to the shelby dress is at the bottom i didn't have enough so i just had to cut another little piece and sew it on but it's only the facing on the inside so no one would even know i mean you probably can't even see from there can you that that's an extra piece just there so i had to do that i didn't lengthen it at all now i'm five foot nine and i do think that named clothing do draft for taller um people i'm sure it's five foot seven maybe or five foot eight is in my head so i thought you know what i'm not going to lengthen it and i didn't need to and i think it's perfect as well um the instructions take a bit of understanding if i'm honest um it's not like a really easy make where you just look at the instructions and go yeah i know what they're talking about um not at all <laughs> basically so i had to really think but it did say that it was for advanced sewists so I was kind of a bit scared because I still don't even see myself as an advanced sewer. So I'd maybe say I'm intermediate, maybe. Um, but I managed it. But some of it did get me scratching my head. And on the yoke, I did not understand the instructions whatsoever. 
I had a look at it about 20 times and in the end I just did my own burrito method to pull it together because I'd done that sort of thing before so I just thought is that actually what they're trying to tell me to do the burrito method but I couldn't even in the um, illustrations work out what it was telling me to do so I just did the burrito method and hope for the best and it worked boom would I recommend it yes I would but be prepared I wouldn't I would not recommend this for someone who hasn't been sewing for very long I mean, you know me, I'm kind of like, just go for it, no matter what, you could try it. But it's a lot of fabric to lose if you don't get it right. You know, three metres of fabric is quite a lot, isn't it? So just a word of caution if you want to just go for it. Just do it in a fabric that you're not that bothered about. <laughs> not me. So yeah, so that's three things that I have made in June and July that I've got round to talking to you about. I don't think I've got that much more. I've probably got about maybe another four or five things to talk to you about, but I'm already over half an hour, so let's just wrap it up now, shall we? <laughs> and then I'll talk about some more next time. So I am probably going to have an unboxing out next, I would have thought, probably be the Think Pink subscription box, although, again, Royal Mail strikes, so I'm not sure when that's going to get to us. Um and i have my collaboration video with the lovely tamlin and rachel with our loungewear sets that'll be coming up soon i also have um a couple of challenges that i'm taking part in a vlog tour of um the first one is being run by karen from so little time and becky from notes from the sewing room and that's all about upcycling garments but my video is out on the 7th of october i think so i won't say too much more until then but that is kicking off tomorrow with um sam from frugalissima it might actually be today for you depending on when this uploads um but she's the first vlogger to kick us off because she is the upcycling queen anyway isn't she so very appropriate so i'm looking forward to watching her vlog and then um she will talk all about what who's going to be next, but I will pop um, a image up here with some of the details on it as well. And there are prizes and they would like you to get involved. So I won't go into it too much. I thought I'd just mention it now, but you'll see the proper video come up from me um, next week, hopefully. So all that leaves me to say is see you later. Do you want me to vlog all about the Knitting and Stitching show as well? let me know in the comment section down below and I will certainly do that for you because I'm going to be like a giddy kipper, I'll tell you, <laughs> because I can't blooming wait. Anyway, I hope you're all well. I hope you've had loads of time to sew and I'll see you again in my next vlog. Take care, everybody. Bye.